The Paleo-Indian Settlement of the Americas by the Ancestors of Indigenous Americans is one of the most popular topics in New World archaeology. Over the past several decades, more information comes to light which pushes back the dates of when the Americas were settled and shows that there were other Paleo-American cultures alongside Clovis. Investigation into archaeological sites at California's Channel Islands has revealed a unique Paleo-Indian culture that thrived there as early as 12,100 years before present. These Channel Islands people made delicately barbed projectile points and were adapted to coastal life. In this video, I flint up a replica of a Channel Islands barbed point and talk about the Paleo-Indian archaeological context. For my replica, I begin working a piece of heat-treated kaolin chert. Channel Island barbed points were mostly or exclusively made from lithic materials on the California Channel Islands. At this stage, I remove blocky edges and set up the piece for thinning flake removal. Channel Islands barbed points are found on the islands of San Miguel, Santa Rosa, and Santa Cruz off the California coast. Archaeological sites containing these artifacts have not been found on the California mainland to date. The early states that archaeological sites with Channel Island barbed points have produced are around 12,100 years before present. Until approximately 10,000 years ago, all three islands would have been connected due to lower sea levels at the terminal Pleistocene. Since this time, these islands have always been separated from mainland California by at least 7 kilometers. This means that people would have had to have reached the Channel Islands by using watercraft. In order to brave at least 7 kilometers of open ocean, these Paleo-Indian people would have had considerable skill with using boats. This scenario is evidence that fits well with the Kelp Highway hypothesis for the peopling of the Americas. For some time in North American archaeology, it was thought that the Americas were settled via an ice-free corridor between the Laurentide and Cordillerian ice sheets which would have been open for people to access from Beringia between 16,000 and 13,000 years before present. Beringia was a landmass between Northeast Russia and Alaska that would have facilitated the ancestors of indigenous Americans being able to cross over. However, the ice-free corridor may not have been open or habitable for people until well after there's evidence for people being established in the Americas. Often, the ice-free corridor is also presented with the Clovis First theory, that people using Clovis technology were the first to populate North America, and brought this technology from Beringia. The Kelp Highway hypothesis, also called the Pacific Coastal Route, suggests that people initially colonized the Americas by following the continuous coastline from Asia to Beringia and then North and South America. The coast would have been free of glacial ice and could have been traversed by foot and or sea craft. Kelp forests in the Pacific coastal waters would have provided rich food resources and would have been found along the majority of this route. This route could have been undertaken between 16,000 and 14,500 years before present. It may be that both the ice-free corridor routes and the Pacific Coastal Route were used by the ancestors of Native Americans to migrate to the Americas, as this is still a highly debated topic in archaeology. However, based on genetic evidence, indigenous people in the Americas originate from a single founding population, regardless of the route taken to get here. My replica is now at a middle stage of flint napping reduction. I am now thinning the piece while making sure I don't work the piece too small for the dimensions that I desire. 
I create isolated platforms to target the thickest areas of the chirp biface with thinning flakes to make the piece narrow and thin. Channel Islands barbed points have been found exclusively on the islands of San Miguel, Santa Rosa, and Santa Cruz at archaeological sites dating from 12,100 to 7,800 calibrated years before present. In general, Channel Island barbed points have narrow acute tips, tapered stems, wide pointed barbs, and a thin cross section. They range from 27 to 80 millimeters in length. Given the length of time that this kind of projectile point was used, it's not surprising that there's a significant degree of variation found in the archaeological record. Archaeologists have proposed seven subtypes for Channel Island barb points in order to distinguish this variation. These categories include short, medium, flared base, broad stem, long barbed, modified, and preforms. Some of these categories reflect stylistic or technological difference in how these points were shaped. Others, like short and modified categories, probably reflect points that were retouched, repaired, and reworked after they were initially made. The long barbed subtype may have been made to be especially delicate in order to signal the competence and skill of a single napper or a group of flint nappers to other people. Channel Island barbed points are made from a range of chirts and chalcedonies of a variety of colors. Sources of flint napping stone occur on all three islands, including Kiko Chert, Taquan Chert, Santa Cruz Island Chert, and Wima Chert. Unknown sources of chert may have also been used, since sea levels have risen nearly 30 meters since that time. At least one flake of obsidian has been found at one of these sites. The nearest source of this material lies 300 kilometers inland in California, which suggests that the people in the Channel Islands had contact with other groups of Paleo-Indians. Thin flakes detached from cores appear to have been the preferred blanks for making Channel Island barbed points. Researchers studying this technology think that these coastal Paleo-Indians heat-treated their stone to make it easier to flint nap. Overall, the objectives when manufacturing these points appear to have been to form very acute tips and prominent barbs. Researchers suggest that the differences and variations seen among Channel Island barb points may have been functional forms. Some may have been intended for spearing fish, others for hunting birds, and still others for hunting sea mammals. Now with the piece thin, I can begin shaping both the blade and the stem of the point. I accomplish this through both further percussion flakes and pressure flaking. The point takes a great deal of shaping to form a point with a long narrow tang and a blade with wide swept wings. Other types of tools were made by paleo people who lived on the California Channel Islands. Another kind of projectile point has been found at some of these sites called amal points. These amal points are similar to Channel Island barb points, but are narrow, lack barbs, and have serrated edges. Flint nap crescents are another type of bifacial tool they made. Crescents are an artifact associated with paleo sites in California, the Great Basin, and the Columbia Plateau. These crescents are found in cultural contexts associated with the Western stem tradition, also sometimes called the Pluvial Lakes tradition. Channel Island's Paleo people also napped in formal bifacial tools, flake tools, and unmodified flake tools. Worked bone has been found at a few sites, but the tools they made out of bone have not yet been found preserved for archaeologists to discover. Pitted stones appear at some sites, and these appear to have been used to crack hard mollusk shells. Research into Channel Island barbed Paleo-Indians is still in its early stages, with archaeologists still just beginning to understand the types of sites and material culture these people left behind. 
archaeologists have identified at least two types of sites with confidence, hunting camps and shell middens. Some of these hunting camps were temporary inland treks to target certain prey, particularly large birds. The Channel Islands lacked large land animals, except for the pygmy mammoth until its extinction 10,500 years ago, and its remains haven't been found at any Channel Island barbed Paleo-Indian sites. Instead, these Paleo-Americans went into the interior to hunt birds who sought out these islands for nesting grounds free of large mammalian predators. These people were likely using Channel Island barred points to hunt these birds, which included Canada goose, snow goose, cormorant, albatross, and more. These species were all identified from the well-preserved bones these ancient hunters left behind. Another type of site they left behind are shell middens, which are shell, bone, and other debris that are discarded in a concentrated area. These Paleo-Americans were also harvesting red abalone, giant chitin, mussel, black turban snail, crabs, and more shellfish for food. Other marine mammals archaeologists know they ate included fish like rockfish, greenling, surf perch, and sculpin. Seals, sea lions, sea otters, and other types of marine mammals were also hunted, likely using Channel Island barbed points. Hunting marine mammals was probably one of the primary uses for Channel Island barbed points. Due to the variation in the projectile points, they may have had several different functions. Some may have been intended for spearing fish, others for hunting birds, and still others for hunting sea mammals. Due to the differences in stem width and length, it appears that the variations implied different diameter shafts or hafting mechanisms. Due to the delicate nature of these points, they may have been intended for use over water instead of being thrown over land. Missing prey animals on land would easily result in the breakage of these delicate points. However, it still seems that breakage was common for Channel Island barbed hunters, as many points are missing 1-3 to three millimeters of the tip, so it is still likely that they were used to hunt birds. Channel Island barbed points are part of a divergent stone tool tradition that was contemporaneous with Clovis. While it is likely that Clovis, Channel Island barbed people, and other contemporaneous Paleo-American groups were all from the same initial migration to the Americas, it is still interesting to see that the technology that people used is more diverse than previously thought. This technology is indicative of different adaptations. Evidence shows that Paleo people living in the Channel Islands were adapted to a coastal life and focused on marine resources and large bird hunting, while Clovis were adapted to the interior and terrestrial resources. This coastal adaptation present in the archaeological record of the Channel Islands may present evidence for a coastal migration hypothesis for the peopling of the Americas and the origins of contemporary indigenous Americans. What is certain is that the people who made Channel Island barbed points are a new avenue for study in Paleo-American archaeology.